We're going to start today with the basic concept of learning the new ones of the croquet. They're generally called croquet in Russian, which is a kind of a catch-all word, because kruk means a hook, and the most common of the new ones or signs is, is a kruk. But what I want you to know, and now Nicholas and Nathaniel, I know you had some of this, Nicholas, and Nathaniel, you didn't have this. My, my, I was thinking about this before, and I was thinking, and I don't know whether those of you, you know, with Dasha or Dario, you would agree with this, but I think that if one takes singing by the Western notation, I would almost like liken that to, to a road map. It's like following a road map. You certainly can follow the direction of what you're going, but I think that learning this nominee chant of the Krukir is more like a GPS, because it's telling you exactly where you are. When I look at Western notation, part of the problem I have, and maybe because I'm not very good in Western notation, but I can see the approximate area of where we're going in the direction. But if I look at it quickly, I'll go, I'm not exactly sure what note that is. But if I learn these, which isn't that difficult, I know exactly what notes that I'm singing. Now, the first thing I want to start off with is I want everybody to be aware of the fact, of course, that we don't sing songs we, or words, we sing syllables. We have to learn how to sing syllables. Now, what I wanted to do here is, obviously, by the word Lord, I've only got one syllable. But there are songs that have more than one syllable. And so when we're trying to sing, we have to recognize what's happening in every syllable. So if I look at this particular song, it's going to go with Heavenly King here, and I'm trying to get a basic idea of that. I'm going to recknize that I've got He, Ven, Li, King. And so I'm not, I'm not, and one of the problems that I have sometimes, if I'm looking at something new, particularly in English, I'm looking at the notes so much that sometimes I don't really catch the words because I'm watching syllables. But what I want you to understand is, just as an example here, we're going to start off with this, I've taken the word Lord. I've taken the word Lord, and what I have is three things that I have to do when I'm learning how to sing Snamity Chant. First of all, of course, I've got to be able to read the word, and that's why for Nicholas Nathaniel, not the other kids who ought to be here, but the kids who are here, is that's why we teach you how to read Slavonic. If we sing something in Slavonic and you can't read the Slavonic well, then you're not going to be able to do what you need to do to be able to learn the singing, because when you're singing, you've got to be able to focus on three things. You've got to see the word, or actually the syllable. This word only has one syllable. You've got to see what we're going to call the signs. The croquet are the signs. And you've got to be able to look at the note. You've got to do all those three things at one time. So looking at the word has got to be so quick for you, if we're singing something like Vodo Prashed or Christos Rishtaitsa, that I can just look at Christos Rishtaitsa and not have to focus on the word very much, I know it. Even if I look here, I can see this is heavenly, because i got to watch what's happening here, and i got to watch what's happening here, and I have to watch what's happening here. Now the first thing we're going to do is going to talk about the notes. But I want to make sure it's clear that you have some idea that this is how I learn how to sing using this note chant. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this syllable. Look over here, Nathaniel. I'm looking at this syllable, but I've got to look at this sign. I know what this sign is, and you're going to learn what this sign is. It's called a pilot. I'm going to give the English translations of these put it in Russian Slavonic, but a pilot. And I know that I'm singing at the tone of soul, at the pitch of soul. So I know, by the basic chart of the notes, which goes, by the way, the notes, it's interesting, because the notes actually come from a hymn that was written in Latin to St. John the Baptist. And before, and I don't really know when this exactly happened, but somewhere along the line later on, the ut became changed to do. But in the Latin song to St. John the Baptist, it was the first letter of each of the first words, and it was literally ut remia fa solia. So one has got to know what the notes are, we're going to talk about those. But I can look at this and I can say, I know that I have to sing the syllable, which here happens to be a word, Lord. I know that I'm going to sing it at the pitch or at the note of soul. And I know that I'm going to sing just one note, because this sign, this sign, the pilot tells me there's only one note here. And I know, because I memorize, that that note is a half note. Or we often say two-fourths. Now, Father Vladimir Smolikov, in his little book that you have, Nathaniel and Nicholas, he tells us, if you say, how long is a fourth? How long is two-fourths? He gives an idea that he says it's about as long, each fourth is about as long as it takes you to take your hand and go from this point, in a sense, almost down to your stomach or your, your, your knee or your groin. So one 
two is about a half note. So if I'm singing this about a half note, I would hold it for about sol. Now one of the other questions that arises, and this is one of the difficulties people often have when they're not used to the singing by this nominee chant, is how do I know where sol is? How do I know where sol is? What I mean by that is, how do I know if sol is like this? Sol. Or how do I know if it's sol? Or how do I know if it's sol? You know what the answer is to that? Father Arufius, you know what the answer is to that. How do I know where soul is? If you're talking about people who sing it's nominee chant, and I don't know that anybody <coughs> sings nominee chant by the actual nuums or the croquet the way we do, the way old believers do, because some other Orthodox try to sing nominee chant, but generally they do it now using Western notation. But if you take the idea of how do you know where soul is going to be? How do you know where Lord is going to be at soul, Father? In the system that we use, you listen to the starter. You listen to the starter. Yeah. It's where the starter determines it is, and so we don't have any pitchfork or something of that nature. It really depends where the starter is. And one of the important things about learning to sing in old rites, nominee chant, is hopefully you have starters who have some sense of where, let's say, a, a, a mean would be. And what I mean by that is, if I'm looking at this system of notes, again, we're going to talk about this. And if I look at this this scale. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to go, Utre mi fa sol ya, fa, fa. Another one of the things that I often try to talk about in our church, that's not always done that way, fa ought to be at about the same level where a deacon is ending with their litany. So a deacon ought to be trying to end it, fa, but he goes, in peace let us pray to the Lord, Fa, Lord, have mercy. So there ought to be a consistency there, hopefully that the deacon ends at Fa, and the starter has a sense that Fa is somewhere in a range that everybody's going to probably at least be able to go, Ya, and Ut. If you go Fa here, Fa, then probably Ut's going to be Ut, and it's going to be way too low. All right, now we're going to get into that again a little bit. But in this particular instance, I know that I should sing this half note for about sol. So if I look at the scale and go, What am I for sol? Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm holding that a little long. Lord. Here, I know that this sign, because I've learned it, tells me that I'm, not, I'm going to still sing one note, but I'm going to sing this one note for the length of four fourths or a whole note. And so here, in, here I'm going to go, Lord, da, da, da. Here I'm going to go, Lord, Lord. This sign over here, the only way to do this is to memorize them, tells me that I've got two notes that are going up. Now I don't have one note, I've got two notes. And the two notes are going to go up, and I know that they're going to be a half note apiece or two-fourths apiece. So I'm going to go, if I'm trying to get up to somewhere like Lord, I'm going to go, Lord. Lord. And finally here, I happen to know this. Now I'm getting more complicated with my signs. I know, because I memorized this, that this is a sign that has three notes on it. I know by looking at that, the three notes are going to take me up to sol. And so without seeing this, I actually know I'm going to have mi and fa and sol. And I'm going to sing it like this. Mi, fa, sol, Lord, Lord. All, right. All I wanted to show you there was, how do I have any idea how to sing? Because I have to know how to read the syllable. I've got to recognize what notes so I know how high or how low I'm singing. And then finally, I've got to know what these are. And this is the hardest part of this, but it's very feasible. It's just that we're not spending the time that we need to spend on these to really learn these. Okay, now I wanted to give you an example again because I said, and I hope I've done this correctly, that we're singing syllables. So here the word is one syllable, but here's the word that isn't three syllables. And I know from knowing these signs that I'm going to go mi, fa, sol, fa. So if I sang it, I would go mi, fa, sol, fa, heavenly, heavenly. All right, so what we have to do what we have to do, if we're ever going to know these, and Kira and Anna, I saw you walk in, I know you've had this before, so I apologize, but we're going to start at the beginning again, and we're going to do this in three parts, okay? The first thing that we have to be able to do, and by the way, it's kind of an interesting aspect, and Father Rokas, I'm not sure that you know this, maybe you do know this, in at least, the Greeks also had a system like this. 
This system, these things, what they're known as, is they're known as, I thought I brought a good one here. I've got several just in case. These are known as new ones. The Greeks also, in their system of Byzantine chant, used new ones. The Russians basically again call them krukir, but you have to learn what they are. So the, the major part here is I can learn to scale very quickly, but I've got to learn to recognize the new ones. And once I recognize the new ones, we're going to call them signs. So what we really have to do is we have to recognize we read the syllable, we recognize what the scale is, and then we memorize the new ones, the signs. Once we do that, the singing is not very difficult, and it really is very different, uh, very distinct. The other thing I wanted to say is, whatever reason, the Russians actually, until the 17th century, did not use these red marks. These red marks weren't there. So until the 17th century, again, even the system was more like a road map than a GPS. When the Russians came up with the, with this, with the notes, then it became much more specific. Okay, so we're not going to talk about learning how to read here, but again, especially for Nathaniel and Nicholas, and I hope some of the other kids will come later, that's why we make you read the Slavonic, so you know the Slavonic, and you can look at it, and you know Nathaniel, I often tell you in church, even if the Slavonic, look at it, the more you look at it, the more you'll be able to read it, okay? But we've got to learn the scale. The scale of notes, again, you simply, and there's no other way about this, you simply have to memorize what these are. It doesn't take a great deal of time. What we have in this system anyway, and I don't know if the Greeks did or not, and I, I guess in the, in the Western system it's simply an octave, what we have is we have what's called the low scale, and we've got the normal scale, the middle scale, the normal scale, and we have a high scale. Now one of the reasons I've indicated before that whoever is starting better have an ability to start a fa somewhere that's fairly, you know, fairly reachable for everybody. I mean, I want to make this point clear to you before, and Dottie and I had this discussion not too long ago. You, you have to be careful before you start to say, I'm going to choose this person to start or that person to start, because one of the problems we had for years is many of our people who started started very low. And if you start low to begin with, you remember this, Father Rothius, you start low to begin with, when you get down to here, it's really going to be difficult. And those of you who know when we sing the Zestipolarians, the Svetilans, and they end up with, uh, or if you sing, Lord, I have cried, but what sports in the first tone? Bo -bo, but it ends up really low. And if you don't almost cheat up, when I'm starting Bo -bo sports in the first tone, I normally try to go, because we're never going to hit those low notes. Okay, let's look at the notes. Again, these notes are based on upon a Latin hymn to St. John the Baptist. But what happened is, I, I want maybe I should make the point here, okay? What ends up happening is, this note is sol. But it's not written as sol. I mean, if you were trying to do that, you'd have a mess trying to follow those. There are simply symbols for the notes. And let's take the regular scale, you have to realize, and again, even in the old Latin, in the old Latin scale, the first note was not do, it was ut. And I, I don't know, if we go in a, a search engine, I'm sure you can find out when that changed. But the scale is ut, and you can see here, here's the Slavonic, or you can see the transliterated form. This is ut, this is re, the period is mi, the m is fa, I guess I'd call this pi, is sol, and then the pi with another square in the bottom. I, I, I don't, Father Theodore made this at one time. I'd make this one a little more like this. It almost looks like it, he's almost got it like it's this. And it really looks more like this one. This is Lya. You have to come to the point that you simply memorize, that you memorize the scale. I know that when I look at this, and that's one of the things I'm going to ask you next time we get together. What is this? Without looking at the scale, what is this? You've got to recognize what this is. So again, hopefully, what I'm going to do is come to some ability to say, if I can think to myself that I want fa in an ability, and I've been singing for 45 or 50 years, so I know that for us to sing fairly well, I've got to be able to do something like fa, fa. So I'm going to go up the scale just like, I think. Do you guys still have music in school? You know, at least when I was a kid, we went do, re, mi, fa, sol, ya, ti, do, ha. We don't do that. You don't do that. We sing it. We All right, but I'm going to go... Utre mi fa sol ya, utre mi fa sol ya. Okay, but it's following that. 
Nathaniel, Nicholas? Mm -hmm. Okay, how do I know that's it? You know the answer that I'm looking for, Nathaniel? How do you know that's it? How do you know this thing is good? I'm, I'm suggesting to you see a song right here. See, suppose I have a song. Yeah, let me use the Lord. Suppose I have this. How do you know that that sign is ut? Nicholas, you got to memorize it. There's no other way around this. you got to memorize it, and it's one of the first things I want you to do. I, mean, I want you to memorize the scale. Now, if you don't have one, anybody who's coming here will give it to you. This is the little primer. So the primers are here. They're in the box. Maybe somebody like Nicholas could go get those out of the box and pass them around to anybody who doesn't have one, okay? So if you look and you open the page, you will see the first thing that's in here is that scale, all right? It's called gamut in Russian or Slavonic, but it's the same. So we want to recognize this is utremia fasolia. The overwhelming majority... The overwhelming majority of what we sing is in this regular scale. But as you know, there are songs sometimes that end up down here, and there are songs that end up up here. Now, one of the problems that I have, and I've said this before, I don't think you have to have a great voice to be a singer in the church. And in fact, I don't think it ought to be concert singers. But I think you have to be able to carry a, a tone. If you can carry a tone, you're going to be okay. So let's look at this again and we go. Everybody okay with that? Uh -huh. Boys, you're okay with that? Uh -huh. Okay, again, you have to simply memorize that this letter that looks like a Slavonic K or G is what? And this note that kind of looks like a Slavonic or Russian or Cyrillic N is Re. The period is Mi. The M is Fa. The pi is soul, and this is lia. Now the problem again is, look guys, look at, here's a little change down here. I'm going to go to the low scale. In the low scale, the note ut and the low re is way as how low can you go. This is low ut and low re. They look exactly like the regular ut or re, but you can see, of course, they have a little x by them. They have a little x by them. I know this is low ut and this is low re. And I started to say this earlier, I don't have tremendous range. So I have real difficulty down here. I probably have less difficulty here, but down here I can't hit low notes. I go flat when I try to go in that area, but sometimes I have to force myself because no one's singing. But in any event, this is low wood and this is low re. But notice this. The low mi has a whole different note than the regular mi. It's the letter, the Slavonic letter. Nicholas, what does this look like? What Slavonic letter? What's this right here? Earth. Doesn't that look like a Slavonic letter to you? Oh, yeah. What? What? No, what? That doesn't look like what? What? S. S. Like S. Okay? But we're not talking. We're not... You, you want to forget. You don't want to, you don't want to think of these as being those letters. You want to think of this being lo ut, lo re, lo mi. Ut, re, mi, fa, sol, ya. Now look when you get into the high scale. The high scale, fortunately, it's the same notes you had in the top of the regular scale, except they have a dot above them. So this is high fa, high sol, high lia. Now, I don't even know. I mean, I'm going to try to do this, but I'm sure I'm not going to be able to do this. But if I'm trying to do this, if I'm starting here and going, ut, here I'll probably go something like, ut, re, mi, ut, re, mi, fa, sol, ya, fa, sol, ya. It's fairly close. It's fairly close. I started about where I should because I was pretty much able to do that. But again, overwhelmingly, this is where we're at. Very few songs ever have this. Some songs do have this. So, you know, those of you who sing in the church, you know that. And it's, it's difficult to hit the low or the high. And that's where, hopefully, everyone's singing. So if everyone's singing, like when we are singing the Exhausted Polarians, it's the tune that you don't want to talk about. Oh, da, you know, and those are really low. If everyone's singing, then I'm going to stop singing when we get down here, because I go flat down here. I can't, I can't hit those. Yeah, Neil. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Sure. So if I'm singing, if Dari is starting, right. okay, and we go to some of the lower octaves, right. 
Daria doesn't sing as low as I sing. So when Daria is saying fa, should I be at the exact same pitch as Daria, or should I be at a lower? I mean, I know we don't harmonize. Yes. So, or should I be at a lower pitch? Because I have found that, and obviously I'm the rookie here, but I mean, when I'm with John, I actually sing pretty well because he and I sing at, at, rel at, at basically the same pitch level. But if I'm singing next to Daria, I have a harder time because I don't know if I should be trying to hit her pitch or if I should be going to a lower pitch. That's a really good question, and I want, to, I want to tell you again. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that I haven't taught as much as I should over the years, I've tried. One I've done because I'm really not a music expert. I know this, I, I, and I said this I think before you came in, Neil. One of the important things we have to recognize, and I asked this to Father Rothius, in our system of singing, when you really come down to saying, how do you know where Phi is? Phi is where the starter decides Phi is. But I remember Bishop Daniel saying to me years ago, and sometimes I don't quite understand this whole thing, because I would say to him, and he was a music expert, I would say to him, how can you sing fa and basically be where Daria might be at fa? And he said, you have to realize there's different octaves. Right. So I can be in a different octave, which is not harmonizing. That's right, it's not harmonizing. Okay. It's just recognizing that my fa... Now, now there's a, the, the, I mean, there's clearly an idea here that goes, if she's going fa and you go fa, no, that's going to be a problem. Right. But we do sing at different octaves, and yet we can still be at the same basic pitch with one another. Okay. Now, I mean, I do want to say to you, you know, I do want to say to you that certainly we ought to be trying as guides as much as possible. I've been indicated this many times before. Surprisingly, and, and I've said this before, and I'm not saying, your father likes to start really high. I mean, he really starts high when he does. And so when your father would do a Panahita, for example, if I were starting Lord Have Mercy, I'll go something like, Lord Have Mercy, and your dad would go, Lord Have Mercy. That's going to be rather difficult for me to do, but I'm going to try as much as I can to be somewhere in that neighborhood <coughs> so we're not off. But I don't have a real better idea. And I understand exactly your question, and I, I don't fully comprehend it myself as much as to say, you want to try as much as possible to be in the same ballpark. You know, and, and one of the things that I've had difficulty sometimes, even with the, you know, the guys, and I've said this to Harry, and even Father who wrote this, I've said it to you, it's really important. I mean, I know in many types of singing, you might say, a person is starting, everybody's starting exactly at the same time. Very often you have to say, I've got to start at least a half a note or half a word behind, because I've got to hear where that person's at. You know, I've got to hear where that person, and I, and I do tell this, I want you to know, sometimes I tell John, I think John starts a little low. John starts a little low. And, and he's not at the same area that Dottie is. And, and one other thing yeah, I want to say, and this is one of the things I tell the people all the time in the singing. This is what a lot of people don't get. Of course, I can sing like this, my, my comfortable level, Lord have mercy, but I can go also, Lord have mercy. And if I have to, I can go, Lord have mercy. You know, we all have the ability to adjust our voice to a certain extent. And that's what we have to kind of do based on where the starter is starting. But see, what I think you just did was you just hit three different octaves. Yeah. That, I mean, because the one thing yeah. I've noticed is that when there's... Well, don't use those words here. Okay. But when there's... No, that's the right word to use. When there's the traditional notation, um, and then there's the Western notation, I've noticed the one thing that's not on the Western notation is they don't give the B. Normally they see a 4-3 or 4-4 or four, four, something like that. And they also don't adjust the octave. Right. I, I didn't... I'm, no, no either, you're absolutely I, right. I, I, I took a lot of music when I was before high school, and that's so, so you don't see that, but that's okay. That's very helpful because I always thought I had to meet the precise pitch no. of whatever the starter is but, doing. But I mean, the one thing you don't want to do is you certainly don't want to be singing something like, you know, somebody's going, Lord, and you're going, Lord, have right. mercy. Yeah, and and you know. Sure, right. Okay. okay. Kira, you got a question? May I please use the restroom? Yeah. Father, yeah. yeah. Here, but I, the hard thing I have a hard time understanding is. There's now when you learn learning the notes, but then you add in the tones. So, or like just say tone one. So tone one is it conceivable to say everything, every canon, every invoice in a canon in tone one is almost it's going to be the melodic. It's going to be yes. you know. What yes. I mean? Yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. What, that, how would you what he's asking us, and that and that's why sometimes in Dottie, I don't know if you have that problem or not. If I'm singing odes of a canon and I'm singing, let's say, the Katavasi in the center at tone 8, and then I've got to go that's, over yeah, and sing the Ode right. of the Canon in tone 3, sometimes I have difficulty. The notes are the notes, but there's still a melodic pattern, and that melodic pattern can make a slightly different aspect of how those notes sound in a different place, and that's another, that's another portion of this whole thing. You see, there's a whole bunch of steps, and we never get beyond about step 2, that's our problem here. 
Step one is to basically say, I'll learn the notes. Step two will be, we'll learn the basic signs. But step three, there are melodic patterns that we generally don't get to, and we've got to get to that level. Because if we don't, if we don't, we're going to come to the point where we're going to really lose half of what this singing is all about. And people out there all over the world, literally, all over the Orthodox world, are like begging us, teach us, and then we go, we don't want to teach you because we have some problems with ourselves on this basis. Did Even I say, the yeah. parts of the tones that we know by heart have notes that go with them. Yes. Yeah, see, that's we what, yeah, don't, we don't, we don't, we don't see, see them because right. we know them by heart. Yeah. And the, the, I guess my best example is if you take <clears throat> like tone one, or tone, tone one seems to always be for a lot of great feasts. Yeah. So tone one, tone one on Saturday, uh, Resurrection. Those, those are just, they're the same. They're the same pattern. That same right. melodic right. pattern. And the only thing where I, you can get thrown off you know, is uh, like the great can. I want to make a There yeah. doesn't seem any kind of tone like right? I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm, mix, I'm mixing. Uh, I'm mixing. Uh, I'm mixing, uh, I'm mixing, uh, I'm mixing, uh, I'm mixing uh, Slavonic and English. But I want all of you to understand this. Yeah. Look, I know you can't read this, but Nathaniel and and because all of you, all of you come to church enough and do this. There's really two types, two portions to the singing. One's called glossovoi penia, and the other's called crocovoi penia. What glossovoi penia is, and that's so different than what you're used to doing also, Nick, in the new right singing. What glossovoi penia means, there are, there are songs that are sung not intricately by each note, but by a basic pattern that you memorize. So when you sing, accept our evening prayers, and the end of the tropod, and when you sing, when you sing, God is the Lord, that's tone one, and they are by a melodic pattern that you've memorized. Now, interestingly enough for that, for example, when Dottie and I went to Riga, one of the surprises we had was, even though this is all by a memorized thing from generation to generation, their singing and ours was ex almost exactly the same. That's amazing. Hundreds of years gone by, and we're still singing. So it means we're pretty much following something that's handed down generation to generation. I'll, I'll get into this later on, but there's not some intricate note. I simply know the first tone goes, Accept our evening prayer that I may confess. And what I still have to do, because I learned this way, if I'm going to stand up there very often, I've got to go, because I learned it in Slavonic, yeah. okay? Well, the other part is though, the right? Krukovoy Penia, and that is, you can only say, the, the good example of the Krukovoy Penia is the Cherubic Hymn. The Cherubic Hymn, you're following all of the Krukia, all of the signs. When you're singing Voda Prashed, or when you're singing, I shall open my mouth, I shall open, you can't. Now, what the New Rite did is the New Rite generally, and I don't know if anybody doesn't do this, the new rites somehow, maybe because they got rid of his nominee chant, they lost that ability. So if they sing an ode of the canon, their tone one of every ode of, the can of every canon is all going to be the same, like a glass of white penny. Where ours is, if we go, Christos Rashtaya Toya they're similar to one another, but you can't just basically go, well, this is the same as accept our evening prayer everywhere, okay? All right. Yes, Anne. Okay, just like going back to the homoelotic pattern thing, it has different for like, each tone. So does that mean like fa in tone one is different than fa in tone three? No, no. It's always fa. But I do want you to know that it's a really good question. I understand. And again, I can't explain this real well. The, the pattern, even though I've got fa and sol and so forth, they're the same thing. Sometimes the melodic pattern sets in. I, I want you to hear what I just did again. In Slavonic, I'm going, Christos rashtayete. Christ is born, give for ya poor bit. That melodic pattern is, if you know how to do one, you can pretty much say, I have a pretty good idea how to do this. But still, when I get into tone three, that melodic pattern is not exactly the same. So sometimes I have trouble saying, how do I hit my fa when it's coming from here when it doesn't do that in tone one? But it's still the same scale, okay? And well, the most important... Question, Father, just, yes? And that's just, well, that's how I think, like, Nativity of the Mother of God. There, there doesn't seem to be any kind of... Well, and, and, and yeah, that's a good question, I understand. There's certain of the tones, and I, I can't... You know, the, the question, it's still a huge question for Byzantine scholars and also for Russian scholars. For the Byzantine scholars, the question is often, we have these nooms in the Byzantine chant. They don't look exactly like this. And most scholars go, nobody knows how to read them anymore. In the Russian chant, in this, in this chant, 
the question is often, did the Russians absolutely follow what they got from the Greeks? What we're doing in the next trans transition to English, we're trying to go exactly the way this was done in Slavonic, that's what we're doing in English. Almost exactly. But when the Russians picked it up, did they follow exactly what the Greeks were doing? Okay, the point I'm making then, so if you write tone one, tone three, whatever the case is, tone one, almost any song in tone one, if I'm standing there during Great Lent, yeah. and I'm singing some of those odes we hardly ever sing, I'll sing them pretty well. Yeah. If I'm singing tone seven, tone seven, almost all the odes sound exactly the same. Tone three, yeah. they're pretty close. Get into tone two, get into tone six, Get into tone eight, and you go, oh, I really, I'm not sure how to do that without hearing it more often, okay? Yeah, those tone six comp line, I mean, that's... That's why we don't sing them. Yeah, you the Volnoyum or Scoria type of songs. Yeah. Where, and there's another reason for that, because they've got a lot of these gears, which we're going to talk about later, which we've never gone beyond, but fortunately, we at least have Nikita, who recorded all of these, and we've got to get to that point, or we're going to lose these things, okay? Now, you guys also, you're following what we're talking about? You've got to memorize and recognize this. You've got to recognize, I want you to be able to come the next time we're doing this. And again, if everybody, everybody notices, right? I mean, even for Nick and Neil, right in the front of that little book, you've got the scale, right? You see it there, don't you? Nick, you see the scale? Okay. I mean, I want you to memorize the notes. I don't want to come back the next time and say you don't know the notes, because we really can't go anywhere until you know the notes. If you see me put this, let's suppose right here, let's suppose right here I go and put these two notes. And Nikki, you did this before, so maybe you can re remember this. I'm telling you there's two notes on that Lord. Do you know what those two notes are? <laughs> trying to block the chart that you can't see it. Can you remember oh, what they are or not? The M is Fa. Okay. And the other one is... I, I, let me help you with one thing. Normally, if you have two notes going up or two notes going down, the next note up is going to be the next note in the scale. They go in order. They go in order. Oh. So if you know this is Fa, what comes after Fa in the scale? Um, Do, Re, so. Mi, Fa. Sol. Sol. <laughs> okay. And that's what that is. But you've got to come to the point that if I go like this, and you, Nathaniel, next time I come in and I say this to you, Nathaniel, tell me what this is. Tell me what note this is. I want you to look at the chart now and let's be able to tell me. What is it? What? Um, A little more, though. Look at the dot I have above it. You see? It's this. Hylia. Okay? And you have to, you, it's really important that you understand this, you see, because very in the beginning of the song, look, right here, as soon as I start off, if I look at this, am I going to start off fairly high here? Look right here. Am I going to start off fairly high? Because I'm at soul. But if I 